mate. This could be huge. Oh, that English is the fight. <laughs> Well, it looks like Oda and Co on Team Bliss have secured themselves playoffs. Who else will do so? Well, we've got one more match to determine for Playday 6, and then it's all guns blazing tomorrow night. Dev, who's going to miss out? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to jinx <laughs> anybody. I think whoever I say is going to make it is definitely going to miss out and vice versa. But yeah, it's certainly coming down to the wire here in OCN. Yeah. Uh, certainly not panning out how we expect it would. And this late into the, the stage, it's still super hard to pick any game. It's so hard to know how much to wait to put to these teams that we've known for so long and relied upon for so long because they aren't always performing. No, no, there's been some insane, uh, I, I actually don't even know how to preface it. There's just been some mental results coming through. But let's take a short second to talk about mental health, Dev, because Livin, of course, is one of the big sponsors that we have on board for Oceanic Nationals, OCN, and we're very privileged to have them be a part of it. Now, their message, it ain't weak to speak. It's obviously a very powerful message and one that can pull in and save lives. Their merch, however, is how they get all their incredible deeds. Now, me and Dev will both show our gorgeous living merch off. Now, we can, of course, speak for it. It is as comfortable as all buggery. If you do want to be a part of it, if you want to buy some merch, guys, please feel free uh, to, to go across to the Livin store, type OCN15 in for that promo code. You'll get 15% off on account of us. And Dev, of course, is just apparently a model now nowadays. Uh, what are you modeling for? Oh, God, that's I'm a the model. blue steel if I've ever seen it. <laughs> I'm a model. Oh, Why does it look like you have lip filler? What just happened? I have very luscious lips, Rob. Well, come here and and show me how luscious they are. So, very quickly, if you do want to find out more... Oh, good. If you want to find out more about that, guys, exclamation mark, Livin, L-I-V-I-N, that is where you can go to find all of the information. And, of course, please, please buy some of that gorgeous merch. It's comfortable. But we can move on, Dev, because it's the final game of the night. It's Rhythm Taking on the Knights. It's one that, I mean, if you looked at this in face value at the start of the season, you'd say, okay, why are we even bothering? We should just give Knights the W and walk away with it. This season, however, has just been like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of on its head at the moment. Knights is definitely a team that has not had the consistency we would expect out of them. We thought coming into this season, these guys were number one, no question. And while they've looked pretty good in APAC South, they have cop some pretty significant L's here in OCN. Uh, they've lost to Order, they've lost to Rufflecopter, and they've lost to Chiefs. They've held their own against a couple of these other teams, but it just means that they're not quite sitting as high in the standings as we would have expected, currently on eight points in fourth. And that's actually right next to their opponent's rhythm in fifth <laughs> place, with only one point behind. <laughs> like, how? How has this happened? just been insane this roster is just full of star power full of potential dino has been popping off in apac south and to be fair they're gonna need to back their performances up in apac south here tonight because the team that they're going up against are no slouches that is rhythm leb and fakes these guys i mean i would i'd call them uh veterans However, Ghoul and Supremacists have kind of stormed onto the scene in their own fashion. Yeah, this is Supremacists' first scene uh, at this level in comp. He doesn't have a lot of experience prior to that. Ghoul, he's seen a couple of seasons of comp. Like, he's been a around forever, but just not at this level before. So this is very exciting, uh, especially for players like Leb, who's been the heart and soul of this team for forever, it feels like, honestly. Um, yeah. And as a player like Supremacist is definitely one to watch out for. Uh, he, he plays a mean Ash. And uh, these guys <laughs> have copped some seriously strong results. Like, you look at their OCN runs so far, they might have come into the first game 
and lost out to Rufflecopter. But since then, they've beat Order, Wildcard, and Chiefs. <laughs> plus taking Bliss to overtime. Uh, that is pretty ridiculous. The funny thing is, all of their games, except for one, have actually been in overtime. Uh, <laughs> win or loss. So these guys, uh, they like giving you a good show. Uh, they like to use the full uh, breadth, the full width of the game that we have. Uh, yep. And they are pop some pretty big results to the top teams. They're certainly abusing what is a strange season. Can they do one better? Can they beat the Knights? We're going to find out as we go to the Vitos and have a look where we're going to head. This time we're going to Borrigan. That's right. We're going we haven't to... had it today, so that's okay. Uh, okay, you know what? To be fair, today we haven't seen Oregon, but every other bloody day we see two of these maps being played. But it's okay, we'll give you it for free. Rhythm, however... So it was, all right, it was Knight's choice to go to Villa or Oregon. They've chose Oregon. Do you want a theory craft as to what's going on here? Look, um, we already heard in the last video, uh, Oda said that they banned villa to go to oregon i uh, sorry to go to um, consulate Absolutely. because knights actually lost villa to wildcard so um that's clearly a, a result of concern for knights on villa so that's probably why they banned it also considering rhythm beat uh chiefs on that map don't want to go there uh, as for oregon uh good map for both teams uh rhythm beat order on this uh but lost to rufflecopter uh, and if you look at knights they beat seventh heaven albeit in overtime they're actually 6-0 up they got, almost got reverse swept. <laughs> God, uh, that was close. Plus, Knights won this 7-2 against Q-Confirm, so Knights have some good results here. Well, Knights have some good results here, but Rhythm have some great results in the season. They, both of these teams knew, need to secure points here. Every single point is going to matter. There's three up for grabs. All on who has it, or who wants it more. And you've got to back that up in the server as well. Rhythm with the Maverick ban. Got some really strong Maverick players on the, on the Knights. In particular, always think about Juicy Cleans House with Mav. So I like that ban. Also a bit of a dare. Is Knights going to back that up with the Thatcher ban? And then, yeah, okay, so here it comes. The Thatcher ban, is, you're probably going to see the Cade ban follow through. When Cade is not banned uh, and Thatcher and Mav are, it's, it's, it's very hard to... Uh, Get a lot of these breaches going, in particular the uh, needing hatch, defending downstairs. All right, Knights banning out the mirror, so leaving it in uh, the ball in Rhythm's court as to whether to get rid of the Kaid. Uh, and they lock in straight away the Kaid. There it is. So it could have been a little bit extra spicy there, but letting that through just means that it's, it's going to be a lot easier on the attacking side. Rhythm's usual ban. Both of these teams' usual ban is Mirror. Number one ban by far. 60% of the time for both of these teams. So I think from Rhythm's perspective, they're like, eh, we start on defense first. Let's not make things too hard. Or rather, we start on, on a... Uh, well, they just start on defense, but they're going to attack eventually. Let's not make it too hard for themselves when they get there. Yeah. Well, you know that, you know, it being the Knights, you leave Kaid in, it's just one more avenue that they're not going to worry about whatsoever. Um, ooh. Oh, hello. That is cheeky. Okay. Oh. We really want to know what the play is with the, the Nook, whether they have a specific thing in mind or whether this is like, let's yeah, see if we can poke and prod and make something work. Or if I've seen some Nook can be good for rushes, early rounds, uh, or for hard counter specific setups. <laughs> the thing is, Rhythm isn't really leaning into any uh, like camera utility brought on extra like they don't have a maestro they don't have any bulletproof cameras they just have uh, the default cams so i wonder what sage's play is snap fitness community vote comes in at nearly 80 percent for knights i think that would be fair in the grand scheme of who they are however the season of ocn has shown us anything but that to be true so don't sleep on rhythm here that's for damn sure if you want to have your say ladies and gents make sure you jump onto twitter Go across to R6 uh, Esports OCE. That's where you're going to find the, the votes. And also Snap Fitness AU. That's where you're going to find a lot of these community votes. And it gives us a good talking point. It makes for a bit of fun, Dev. So go ahead and join that discussion. 
And speaking of discussion, it's all going to be about the Nook in this first round, please. I hope so. I really hope Sage can do something interesting with this. At the moment, he's just droning. Now, Sage, from what I've been told time and time again, is the in-game leader for this squad. Of course, these days, the way a Siege plays out, it's not quite like you have one mastermind telling everyone what to do, but you do usually have some primary shot caller. And for the most case, that has been Sage. Good oh. mute jammers. And all right, Juicy finds that first pick. Love to see it. School taken down and undoubtedly one of the C4s to go with it. Very early on as well means that they, not that you very often see it, but there will be no replacing of the jammers. I know that that's a, <laughs> that's wild uh, theory crafting there, but you never know. You never do know. So Josh had well and truly seen one on the freezer stairs, but Soon enough, backed away. And it looks like Rhythm have made that call to back everyone onto the site and double down. Good position from Dino. Set up this electrical hatch nicely. It's Hayward teasing the rear stairs. Man advantage, Knights. They're not seemingly taking blue. Strangely enough. Could rotate there, but for now it seems to be a freezer and lobby laundry push as of yet. Lev wastes C4 and Knights looking to be in a pretty strong position. They've just got to convert this mid round and start to set up for an execute. That they do. Oh, only two drones left here for Knights with 40 seconds remaining, so it is going to have to be the dry peaks to come Ooh, in, fun. and Sage will. Cook that nade to perfection. Level swing find. Josh doesn't expect Dino so close behind. But right now, Rhythm needs to throw everything but the kitchen sink. In fact, including the kitchen sink at nights. And not a single thing hits nights. They don't miss in round one. Yeah, certainly an excellent job from the nights. While they didn't try and pressure blue at all, they had a little bit of pressure everywhere all at once. Uh, they had one player on the rear stairs, a couple players pushing freezer, and then laundry as well. Just inching on towards, uh, they already had a 5v4 man advantage, and then when it came to Rhythm making aggressive plays to even that out, Knights were just always ready for that reef rag. As Rhythm started to have less and less players remaining, it meant that Knights could, well, push in from more of those different avenues at once. Rear stairs, for example, there was no one watching that at the end. Same for laundry, so Knights just slowly closed and tightened their grip until there was no oxygen left for rhythm. Suffocating now. The roster need to really double in. And so they head to dorms. They head to the infamous site of Xenox and Guz. I can already hear the speech. This is the, uh, what's the, what do they say? Not linchpin. This is this is the site that makes or breaks Oregon defense, something like that. There you go. No, you you got to make sure it's more it's more greasy car salesman. Ah. Um, yeah, it's more no, like it's um. Greasy. I'm I'm trying to think. There's like they have this whole spiel, and it's like, you know, it's a good like 10, 20 seconds long, and Xenox goes like, oh, this round's really important. You know, not like other rounds aren't important, but this one will win you or lose you the game. And that's kind of what it sounds like. Um, nice. Yeah. You kind of you kind of need to see the arm action as I do it as well to, oh, to fully yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a little bit hard. You'll get there one day, but... Um, Dino wait, waiting not a second longer to uh, get some early intel there in the bedroom, though, Dev. And... Curious, very curious. New jammer placed on the other side of this meeting wall means Juicy can't breach it as of yet. Good flank watch drone set up though. He's just checking that for now. As his teammates take control of tower. Ooh, I like that. Explosion there from Hayward on the meeting wall below to try and clear off that mute jammer, but it misses. Doesn't actually get the mute jammer. So he's going to have to invest another charge. You can see 
The fact that that Mute Jammer is right up in the corner there, that's the reason for it. Supremacist might actually be able to make a play here. This would be pretty genius from Rhythm if it works out, but he's a bit late. Oh. Is Haywood aware? No, nope, Haywood's already out of there. That's such a shame. Half a second in it. Oh. He'll be able to find at least one free kill. Doesn't know there's one in Tier 3 either. So he will be traded out. But that's okay. Uh, especially considering, like, this Selma can still be activated. As, as long as Sage can destroy the mid jammer on the other side, that Selma will still detonate. The attacker's bomb diffuser has been dropped. In the meantime, Dino has made an extremely useful, vaultable breach on that game's wall. Something that will definitely be needed to be used toward the later parts of this round. And... Dino's just gone ahead and <laughs> ran straight through Trophy and back again. Josh had held his line, so there was no chance of a readjustment here. And now things get a little bit tricky. Things get a little bit dicey here. Four versus three. Knights are definitely not in favor of this round whatsoever. Oh. Ghoul, he adds a little bit of insult to injury. Josh finds one top white, traded all on Dino, and his door in trophy into sight. Actually, a Rooney gated off. He has no utility to clear it. He pushes on through the breach. We try for the res. He actually has time. He's going to go for it. Banshee's still on that wall, not destroyed as of yet. Dino punches that away. It's now a 2v2. The Knights can actually 2v1 this player in big window. They do so. Drex goes down all on Ghoul. Against two players as he backs away. Knights need to start oh. getting this diffuser planted. Ghoul has a C4, but there's no info on site for him. He doesn't know where it's going to happen and pushing up white now in the 1v2. SMG 11 not favoured in this position either. Ambitious C4 and he's going to try something. Unfortunately, it doesn't pay off. Both players on a sliver of HP. As Ghoul pre-fires nearly anything that he can. One player out on big window, provided he doesn't die. This round is in the books. Ghoul rotates back around the games, but it's just not going to be enough. You can see consistently readjusting there are the Knights. And what a round to come back from, Dev. That looked out of reach. Essentially a 1v2 there for Dino, but the fact that he was able to pick up Josh was massive and also falls a little bit on rhythm the fact that in that 2v2 they wouldn't really have known it was a 2v1 so from their perspective right in a 2v2 the fact that both of their players weren't really able to support each other ghoul playing in pit couldn't help drex whatsoever playing in big window and knights capitalize upon that playing the numbers to their advantage 2v1s then a great post plant as well was the icing on the take that's two back-to-back -back wins Certainly seems to be shifting back in the way that we would have originally thought for Knights. And this is the performance that we've been waiting all season for. It's coming right down to the wire for them to secure their OCN playoffs. Uh, currently seated, sitting in fifth place on eight points. If they win this game, they will actually jump up to third place over Chiefs and Rafflecopter. But they do need to win this cleanly. That's the, the big if and but. They need to ensure that they don't let it slip. Um, now, it's it, it does... I think it's going to come down to whether Rhythm can really fire will get fired up and, and get going, Dev, because right now it's just not looking like they're, they've got enough in the in the tank to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a giant. I said these rounds have been close. At least that second one was close. Rhythm actually had the advantage in that 2v1. They just didn't play it well. And Knights did. But we've also seen some other flashes of greatness from Rhythm. Oh, I love this from Haywood. We saw last time his Ash Charge didn't destroy the Mute Jammer, so he's actually shooting a hole in the wall, and he's going to shoot the Breaching Range through that hole, and then it's going to land on the floor on the other side, uh, which will just destroy the Mute Jammer no matter where it is. So I really like that. Really smart. There it goes. 
And yeah, the mu <laughs> oh, actually, it didn't destroy the second mute jammer. <laughs> it didn't put it far enough across, and uh, just the one mute jammer gets uh, destroyed. I, s I like that from Ghoul. He's investing a lot of utility, two jammers into that position. Uh, Juicy actually just leans in and shoots that second jammer. So overall, nice adaptation from Knights. Still with the Aruni gate on that right hand side. So if they ever decide to push in, they'll need to be cautious in doing so. Now I'm sure that Josh or Ash will be going underneath games to dismiss of this last mute jammer. Dino just looking to hold the line of trophy and keep some sort of aggression toward that side of the map as Haywood now getting into a more advantageous position there. And bingo, bango, bongo. That is your opening that you're looking for. It's nice, but Dino once again uses all of his x doing it, so he doesn't have much util. In fact, he's used all of his flashes and all of his x so he doesn't have any util to clear that Aruni gate, which did make things a bit difficult for him last time around. Juicy has a smoke and a Selma he could use. Uh, but aside from that, not a lot of util for Nice to clear that gate off. Steino sets up nicely. Knights have this nice little mid round now to just set up for their execute, but time is ticking, so they really should get that execute going in the next 15 seconds. Babe, could he completely unravel this right now? Making his way up, Juicy. Not looking the right way, but Leb needs to find the timing here. He'll find oh, it perfectly. No. That'll be the free kill from behind. Now, Rhythm can double down on site and ensure that they protect what is most valuable, which right now is games. Josh is forced to push through the Aruni gate dry. And Dino, it's all left onto him in a one versus three with just a vaultable hole in game's wall and imminent death awaiting him in round three here. Rhythm, what's a... Hold. A lot of things went right there for Rhythm. That's the second time they've managed to get a flank up from Tower to take down that, that player. I believe it was Juicy. Both times, Knights didn't learn their lesson. What's more, I, I talked about it a little bit. Dino used all of his utility on that main wall, all of his three stuns. I don't know where they went, but those plus his ex -Kairos. every single pellet, all 18 of them, on that breach, it meant there was no util left to clear off that Aruni gate, which Knights ended up just ha having to walk through. Really, a, a quite a poor setup for that execute from the Knights, and a lot left to be desired from them. But fortunately, on the Rhythms camp, that's their first round on the board, their first way into this. Ah, that's the life that we needed. That is. The something, the spark that may just set that pilot light alight, Dev. And this is a, it could be a turning, but I'm, I do mean this in, in all seriousness. It could be a big turning point for Rhythm if they're able to convert on the back of this round as well. So we'll wait and see how this one plays out, but. Undoubtedly Rhythm, they are in the position that they need to be staying within reach. That's it. Rhythm just staying within touching distance here. That's what's important at this point in the game, early stuff. Knights are a big team to take down, but Rhythm have shown they can play with the big boys. We already talked about it in the pre-show. They've taken down Order, Wildcard, and Chiefs this season. Three of the, the, the big names, three of those OCN plus APAC South teams. Uh, on top of that, they also took Bliss to OT. Good job from Leb, just clearing off. Little bit of droning early round. Stunts it now. Like that aggression there on the rear stairs. And it takes a bit of damage, but Drexworth's for wear. As Knights have completed map control and they're looking to convert. Start setting up this execute. Fortunately, Rob, they have so much more time for this execute compared to last round. Uh Looking a little bit more hopeful here, that's for sure. Haywood, once again, 
looking for early contact. Supremacist still going untouchable at the moment. It's a very tricky place to try to swing, especially with Ghoul still holding a lot of blue. I assume with Smoke Babes remaining, three, in fact, can burn so much time. So Leb and Co are sitting pretty comfortable right now. This is looking so much better from Rhythm Dev. And it may just be, again, another round. It'll come down to the wire. A couple of things changed by both teams here. Rhythm leaning into that projectile denial much more than they did last time. And also for Knights, they've decided to go and try and actually take blue, but it might not work. Nice pre-fire there from Josh. Tries to land that shot, doesn't. As of yet, oh my god, he is lucky to be alive. The gas may well finish him off. There's 5 HP left to his name as he tip-taps away. Sage gets oh, the opening. Sage. Two kills, hello? Finally traded. Supremacist, no! All of Leb. It's a massacre. And the Knights steal the rounds. Okay, um, what? <laughs> that, yep, cool, awesome. Uh, let me break that down. Um, Please. C4 come over, do damage. Um, Juicy and Sage do things, and they get kills. Leb kills himself. Um, <laughs> round done. Incredible. What? I, I don't even... I literally... You blink and you miss it there. Oh, I absolutely. Don't, speechless. I'm going to go and uh, look back on the replay on... Uh... What I'm watching, I've got like a cheeky little clean feed. I can watch stuff back. I'm pretty sure what happened is Sage was pushing from like blue or bot man. Did like tower stairs the whole time? Maybe it was main stairs? No, it was main stairs. He actually pushed down laundry. <laughs> he found just two picks. Uh, and at that point, yeah, rhythm just fell to pieces. Juicy pushed in from the opposite side. I actually kind of like it from Knights. They're not like going for a, all right, let's go for a, a blue rear stairs push or yeah. let's go for a, a laundry freezer push. They get, like, let's go for an everything push. <laughs> and as soon as Knights find a pick, they just like everything opens up for them because yeah. like, if you think about it, right, you're defending Oregon basement. How many positions are there that you have? Like how many ways are there for the attackers to get onto the site? Well, firstly, there's laundry stairs, there's freezer stairs, there's rear stairs and there's blue. So four different angles. You only have five players. So yeah. if if there's an attacker pushing from every one of those and you start losing players, suddenly yeah. you're like, oh crap, we have no one holding laundry anymore. And your rear stairs guy goes to rotate and tries to help with that. Or your blue person tries to help with that. And because Knights are just attacking from everywhere, as soon as rhythms start to expose a weakness, Knights just pile on. Yeah, it's... I honestly think it was just terrible observing from our observer. Um, oh, that too, obviously. At Guzcasts on, uh, on Twitter. So, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Phenomenal. <laughs> Make sure you go and hit him up with a f cheeky little follow. You should You're follow right, him on TikTok Guz. as well. Oh, no. He's, no, he doesn't need yeah. any more followers on TikTok, okay? His He's ego is big enough as it is. Definitely worth following on TikTok. <laughs> so, uh, cheeky resident, caster boy turned observer for the night what a treat we have but definitely it was a insane round to have come down like that and for your 1v1s and geez that's that's the old mute plays back in the day dev oh it's giving me flashbacks glad you remember that one <laughs> yeah on top of the dryer everyone yep. loves it still works a treat as well protects the hatch As Rhythm, once again, just anchoring up I like that to ADSs, but those should be pretty free to, to destroy, really. As he starts to make his way down, and Knights, once again, like, it's so hard to describe what's going on, because it's not like, oh, yeah, Knights are going for this take. They're going for an everything take. For example, this position here. Oh, here's a oh, drop geez. from Hayward. Oh, my oh, God. God. Thank goodness he got traded. That was ridiculous. Uh, but a big pick. Ah, uh, that's the, the pillar player dead, which is massive. And uh, as you can see, like, now that Rhythm have had to kind of uh, account for that, they've enabled this position from Josh just pushing up through Freezer. 
I really like the timing of that as well. Hayward did that with like a minute 30 left on the clock. So even if he doesn't find oh. a kill there, Knights still have so much time to play around. And just like that, Josh is now looking for the opening kill. Oh, oh and Drex! Drex no! He can't find enough of the shots. Josh is down to a sliver once yeah. more. Leb falls and all the dominoes just come crashing down. <laughs> God damn, Knights are looking so good on Oregon. They certainly are untouchable on their attacks. This has been a ridiculous game. Knights have thrown every little thing into it, and uh, it's certainly paying dividends for them. It's, it's I can't believe that they just dropped Hayward down electrical hatch. Uh, <laughs> while Rhythm thought that they were going for like you know a strategic take, hard breaching a wall to expose the the bricks position. No, Hayward just drops down and kills the pillar player like there was so much utility invested into that supremacist was playing the wamai he was behind a shield and now haywood's like oh by the way guys i'm just gonna six pick amaru <laughs> this is uh this is that <laughs> the roll of the dice that x factor i swear knives are like 80 percent they're playing their strat book and the other 20 percent they've just got that strat roulette uh page that you can find online open, <laughs> and they're just like rolling the dice <laughs> Oh, the Strat Roulette book, eh? That's a... Uh, I think I've seen that pulled out a couple of times in the cast of stacks, so that's oh, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, you got to love it. And look, to be honest, it, it's one thing that's... Um, I think... <laughs> what are you doing, Ghoul? <laughs> it's one thing that is um, quite different to, to what I was... When I first joined, it was very different with Wildcard, was Wildcard was so methodical and they very rarely did they throw you know a spanner in the works it was always methodical take and they were always so good at it the knights like you said have kind of mixed this insane methodical style with uh, an unpredictable element to it which i think has worked for them incredibly so um and now as we you know come into 2021 and, and they are looking oh don't you dare tell me okay oh, rob shut great. up we're about to send it in here C come on don't don't do it to me hayward if you're going to look there, you're going to send it. That's all I'm going to say. He's waiting for the call from his teammates. Juicy on big window. There's the first pick. Juicy goes down. If the Amari was to go straight in right now, he might have an opening. He does. He's inside. <laughs> he trades back Leb looking for another player at big window. He sees two in top <laughs> white. He's traded, but it's all on oh, Supremacists. 1v1 now. Dino, you fall. Supremacists are clutched at what is this madness? Put them in a straight jacket because they are going mental. The Knights, what on earth was that? I mean, go for it, I guess. You're up 4-1, you're having a laugh. And to be fair, it came down to a 1v1. Yeah, it's, it's cold outside. I'm still going to send it. <laughs> That was, that was my Haywood impression. He hits the Amaru. He goes pretty deep, but just uh, doesn't quite get it at the end of the day. Uh, big clutch up from Supremacist. If Rhythm win, we may well get him on the interview. He is a lovely gentleman. I love his interviews. Uh, him alongside Boydie, two of my favorite uh, people to interview this season that we have really gotten to speak to before. Uh, they're a lot of fun. And with them getting that round win off the back of the that absolute madness, uh, does give them a look into this game. Like, realistically, two rounds on defense might not be par for the course, but you haven't failed the course. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> appreciate, appreciate the information we got there. So, obviously trying to 
show the Haywood cheeky little uh, can that's been thrown out onto the windmill. Ball at that. Well, that's early. We'd like to see it. Is the impact trick to come through? Yes, I question mark. I, did it. I, <laughs> I didn't, didn't. I didn't. I didn't see it. Uh, he's all out of impacts now. I didn't see the impact trick come through. But why is <laughs> there only it. one explosion? Did he shoot the second one off? I don't know. <laughs> Say, he's going to kill the supremacists just for good measure. He's extra dead this round, so he's definitely not going to clutch. You sure? Yep. They made him extra dead. They benched him, have they? Benched him for this round. Instead of. Coach put me in, it's coach just put me on the bench. <laughs> keeps it warm for now as he keeps the observation tools warm on camps for his teammates. Ghoul's done some good work here, reaching Attic from Tower. Also spotted out that Banshee. 4v5 there for Rhythm. And look, while I said they hadn't quite failed the course, you know, it's looking pretty grim this round. They start to run out of utility as well. And Sage. <laughs> Man, surely he's not able to do what we've seen Rhythm do twice before, flank up tower. Like, surely not. Oh, he's got the vertical line, though. Oh, but Sophia's just ran on the other side. Drex gets away scot-free. Nova's been taken down. Still got a chance to play oh. here. Sage, however, he has warned Rhythm to his position. Doesn't really do too much right now other than take their attention away. And that's what we were waiting for. Bada oh. bim, bada boom, forget about it. Rhythm <laughs> are out of the round. Rhythm just could not keep time. Knights stepped up massively and uh, every which way, whether it be Josh in Attic just retaking when Drek started to support his teammate or whether it be Sage using that C4 to get the better of Ghoul in tower. Knights uh, closed it out quite convincingly there, and they put themselves really within a, a, a small leap from uh, taking the three points here. Quite a significant achievement, considering what we, what we might, at the start of the season, have expected Knights uh, taking on Rhythm to be a clear-cut equation. That's not been the case as of late. Knights in fifth place on eight points. The three points here would put them on 11. Above, get this, Bliss, Chiefs, and Ruffle sitting in second place after Order Army. That would be massive. Hang on, what you just confused me then? If Knights win this, I think they get three points, right? Yeah. And they're on eight points. So yeah. if they get three points and they're on yeah. eight points, they end up on 11 points, yes. which is more than 10 points, yes. but less than 12 points. Yes. So therefore, they will be in second place. Third place, because your boy's bliss just won. Ah. Big ups. That's why. Okay, so come on, man. Refresh Liquipedia. I did I mean, refresh I mean, Liquipedia. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I Damn it. You. I knew it. I, I didn't it. refresh the Wikipedia. <laughs> I knew it. I just got oh, caught man. in 4K. 4K. Yeah, you, you got caught big time, son. But the the point still stands. They'd be sitting third place. So uh, that's considering big. considering the season that they've had, uh, that would be pretty big ups, honestly, Dev. So certainly would. Um, now I don't know whether it would lock him into the playoffs, but it would pretty be pretty. <laughs> Pretty good chance of doing so. Uh, As for this round, though, Rhythm, long way to go to get back into this. But, of course, they're on seven points. Uh, so there's still a shot at them making playoffs. But they're tied with Wildcard for second last place at the moment. And they certainly need to get on their bike. Well, on their bike, they should be getting. Mr. Dead Martyr, because there's really only limited time left. And with this now, they are starting to push back the remaining members of the Knights who are, for all intents and purposes, holding that upstairs floor. And Sage will find a free kill and back away as well. In fact, it's Juicy that'll come in to do a little bit more damage. 
How have Knights gotten away with murder there? My goodness. Oh, this crisp. is a nice shot from Supremacist. This is still just the roam clear, keep in mind. And there's uh, a lot left to be said. A <laughs> nice shot there. Uh, Josh caught uh, completely botting out. And that 3v3 is not looking too bad here for Rhythm. Well, if they do manage to bring this back, you can definitely sit there and say, Knights, I mean, I know you're having fun, but come on. <laughs> Three uh, well, points you need. Do you remember them being 6-0 up and losing <laughs> six rounds in a row to 7th hey, Heaven hey, on this very map just we last week? We don't add that salt. We don't add that salt or that lemon, okay? That's, that's naughty, Dev. Uh, not yet, maybe. But we'll see how this game continues to pan out. If Rhythm can get themselves together and, and pull off a semblance of a, an execute here as Nova starts to make his way on through. There's Breath away from this. Oh. Actually dodging the Banshee as well. That's wow. big. Wow. That's massive, Dev, because they're not going to know. Oh, he makes the sound cue, and that should be it. Oh, what? What? Wow. How have they won that? How have Rhythm come away with that round? What on earth? All right, Rhythm, I see you. We mentioned the inkling of a comeback, and, well, they make it 5-3. Not close yet, but certainly the, uh, the notion has been briefed, and we've seen the cliff notes. It might not have been passed as of yet, but... Pretty nasty stuff from Rhythm as they take a tactical timeout. Try and catch this momentum, catch the lightning in a bottle and see if they can put it to good use. Good way of putting it. Great play from Thank you. Pia, pia. else to add there so i thought i'd well, just thank um, you for your color commentating that's okay man exceptional was it hype enough for you <laughs> uh yeah very 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 exciting really got me jumping out of my chair yeah um that's what i'm that's what i'm here for you know oh, i bet i thank you that's okay i'm not a smooth brainer all right <laughs> how many times have you said smooth brain and wrinkly brain tonight on broadcast because Tonight, I, I'm pretty I've said I'm smooth pre brain twice, and I've said wrinkly and rough brain once. But I said seven head for Silex, and I said big brain you, for Silex as well. You just write well. it down every time you, you say a word. You just write it down. It's like, okay, I'm going to say that three more times this season. That's cross no, off. see, I, I have no information in my head, so I have room for, like, really useless stuff that just makes absolutely no sense. Um, no, but the really like, good pieces of information I need, I don't have, so... Uh, explains a lot. It really does. It really informs me as to the nature of your casting. Defenders yep. protect your bombs from being defused by attack. That's why I'm so hype as a color caster, you know? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't even keep a straight face while saying that. Uh, lucky, lucky you are the, the Batman to my Robin. Or are you the Alfred to my Batman? Which one is it? I could never figure I that could, out. I think I want to be Alfred, to be honest. I think everyone wants to be Alfred. No one. <laughs> Who wants to be Batman? It's Michael Caine, for goodness sake. Oh, I know, right? And who, wait, hang on. Who was the new... The new Alfred was the guy from Aragon, if anyone remembers oh, really? that, I, that movie I, back in the I, day. I actually um, completely removed that film from my memory as soon as I saw it. Oh, what are you talking about? It, it I watched that it like bad. six months ago. I love it, dude. It, it's what one of those is wrong with you, mate? It's one of those really cheesy what? movies. Yes, yeah. I mean I never read the I never read the Aragon books, but like I know that there are some passionate fans of the books that think the movie is a steaming pile of garbage. So okay, so you haven't read that you, book, Deb. I haven't read a book since the third grade. <laughs> so <laughs> you can read. <laughs> oh, you know what? You know what? You're lucky you're cute. You're lucky you got you got <laughs> get kissable away. lips. Get away with a lot because of it. And you know who else gets away with a lot? The Pittsburgh Knights. Five rounds to three, but Rhythm and just taking the attack time out. And on the back of it, they're looking nice and organized. Attacking Kitchen Meeting. 
Time ticking away. They've taken tower control. Doesn't really say much, to be honest. That's really just step zero of this attack. Reaching the wall is step one. Right. Step one will take a fair while, I would imagine, until they get that attic control, which doesn't look like it's going to come for free. Dirty deeds are not done freely. They've got no way of really getting that mute jammer unless they go from the attic window. However, they have been able to deal with in kind. And Leb does find Sage, though, so... Good info as well here from Rhythm and this breach. Just a single line of sight. It's going to deny any kind of pressure applied from Attic. Supremus is furthest the man advantage here for Rhythm. The big thing isn't just that they have man advantage, but they have so much time left. Considering that Hayward still has the opportunity for plants and I'll, as does Juicy with the smokes and potentially Dino with the C4 still in his pocket. Rhythm just make sure, need to make sure that this execute is timely. 50 seconds left. They could start to attempt at any which point. Like this from Nova. In comes the smoke. So it will take Hayward's attention for quite some time. I don't know whether he could see just on the outside of the smoke. Oh, oh does he, he find a Selma charge? Oh, it didn't, it didn't work. Oh, no, no. He got the one in the top. He didn't get the one below. So fortunately enough, they now have a line of sight to dismiss split. But they've still got to get a move on. It's still a two versus five, though which is very much favoring rhythm. Well said, Juicy's just used all of his gas. Supremacist runs into a brick wall there as Juicy and Hayward try and hold this. That's a great shot from Lair, but he closes it. That's a massive play in a huge round with the night skin in tow. Lair <laughs> steps up and takes it to them. <laughs> Oh, how's that salt? Get, uh, you get done by your own gun. Love that from Leb. And moving forward, Rhythm uh, are still within that, uh, that reach. Now, unfortunately for all you wonderful humans at home, you're coming back to our faces, uh, which can be seen as either good or bad. Maybe good for uh, this handsome devil. Maybe not so much for this one. So welcome back. It is a rehost sound bug and Dev Marta is Abercrombie and Fitch. How do you, I can't even remember what the actual name is. You're a Adonis. model though. Adonis. Adonis. Is the word you think so? For. I think you're Icarus. You flew too far, <laughs> too, too close to the sun, mate. Too close to the sun you are. But uh, well, I, I can't think we say the... that you can't read, but you can make references to Greek mythology. So okay, okay, Greek <laughs> mythology is a beautiful thing, and we don't need to worry about whether I can read or not. Okay, Mr. Cupid over here with the kissable lips, settle down. It's five four. Rhythm are back in this game, um, and you know you were you were talking about capturing that lightning in the bottle. Mm -hmm. I think they just went and took Zeus. Off of the uh, off of the throne, they just they, you know they, they certainly did, and you know they've had Athena lend some of her wisdom because they've managed to to make this comeback start to be a bit of a possibility, and they're running faster than Hermes on a mission to deliver a message, and that message is that Rhythm is here to stay. <laughs> oh, okay, I see you there, Hercules. Settle down. There's only room for one demigod on this broadcast, and that's Hippie <laughs> style, and he's already gone. Well, let's have a look at some of these replays so far from this uh, match. This was a, a massive round. Dino essentially clutched this 1v2 by reviving Josh, who then helped him out massively. Uh, we also saw a lot of big flanks. Uh, Knights really did struggle on some of their attacks thanks to these big tower flanks. It worked so well for them. But we've also seen... Uh, Rhythm struggle with those flanks themselves as well. Mm. And that's, you know... <laughs> it's, this round. <laughs> this round in particular. Um, hey, this round just, in particular uh, again. Hey, is just, I don't know where his brain is. Um, but like, he clearly doesn't need it. Because how, just... how did Haywood 
do that and still lose the round. That's what I just don't <laughs> understand. I really will for, forever be gobsmacked at that. But, you know, this is the scary part is Rhythm are actually closing that gap, you know? Yeah. And look, what's more than that? Rhythm have had so far of their five games in OCN, all of them but one have gone to overtime. And uh, with the record that they've had at pushing overtimes, even when they've lost, and the record that we've seen from Knights on throwing leads on Oricon in APAC South, a 0-6 lead to an overtime 8-6 win uh, against 7th Heaven, uh, we know, we know for damn sure that it is possible for Rhythm to make this comeback. I guess one thing that we probably need to mention as well is a reason for maybe the disparity and a little bit more comfort on the attacking side may have to do with the bands. I mean, it really more so works for the basement defense than it does for uh, a majority of the others, but uh, other sites, I should say. Look, honestly, for a, a map feeder where we have Thatcher, Maverick, and Kaid band, we saw a little bit of mute coming into play in terms of Walton Isle uh, from Rhythm. Like they had that double mute jammers on Attic wall, Knights dealt with that without too much trouble. But I feel like we could have seen a lot more impact tricking. Um, I feel like wall denial should be a bit easier than it has been so far. Uh, but I guess it just goes to show both of these teams are really good at, at dealing with that wall denial, the mutes and the bandit batteries with explosives, um, which is one of the great things about Oregon is that on that dorm's bomb site, like all the walls you would want to hard breach have soft floor underneath them. So you don't even need Thatcher, you don't even need Maverick, you can just deal with it with explosives. Both these teams have done a really good job, but I would like to see these explosives also used by the defense to then fight back and counter uh, the hard breach with impact grenades, which we haven't seen much of so far. So what you're telling me is you want to see a counter of the counter. I, I mean, will we, were you watching that Coastline game earlier tonight? That was <laughs> Chief's order was just counter, 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 counter. Uh, I think I think we watch two different games. I watch checkers, <laughs> you watch chess. You're sitting there in the band phase and like in the in the operator phase. I'm literally sitting there like, oh yeah, that's cool. Oh look an Oryx, that's gonna be fun. He could jump up hatches. Meanwhile, you're like, yes, but you see, he's being played for, blah, 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 and I have absolutely no damn clue what you're going on about. In all fairness, um, I kind of just get lost with your voice. Uh, <laughs> very easy to do uh Look, you're like a, a siren right yeah yeah well, what are uh, they in, the yep the sirens well in greek mythology um there are some heroes known for their brains and some for their brawn so unfortunately <laughs> you don't have either of those but <laughs> oh, that's get okay there's still room for you on the broadcast man have you seen my chunky butt that's, i have actually that's broad yeah. enough for you it certainly is well, no, here wrong. I was. Here I was giving you all the all the uh, compliments. Just make it too easy for me, man. Gotta, so, do I make up for the brawn that you don't have? Is that how this yes. works? I certainly okay. do not have brawn. So, yeah, that was that was where I was going with that one. You you can take care of that. Oh goodness me! This just becomes a podcast after a while and a rehost. You kind of have to uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride because at the end yeah. of the day. It is the last match of the day. It's the last match uh, before, really, a Play Day 7, the final instalment of the regular season, Dev. And it is still wide open. You know what? If we're still a while away, Prod, and uh, you want to bring up the standings as they were at the beginning, we could very quickly just talk about uh, where people are in relation right now because I think that this is actually... Uh, quite relevant to this match and future matches, considering three points riding on this for Knights as it is for Rhythm. It really, like the next play day tomorrow is going to be really important when you look at who Knights are playing. They're playing Bliss, right? Yeah. And, and they are the team that are in hot form here. Yeah, and what's more than that, even just this game right here, um, Knights could take the three points, which has been looking likely so far. Uh, but with Rhythm catching up, it might be that uh, Knights only get two points if overtime is pushed here. That would put them on, cool. on ten, 10 points total. Uh, and depending on the round difference and the head-to-head -head against Chiefs, that would actually have them in fourth place. So having to fight then, like, 
more closely in the trenches with Chiefs would make it even more difficult. And of course, between first and fifth place, right, everyone gets playoffs. Yeah. But every placing higher you get, that's one less game that you have to play. So the difference between fourth and third is like winning an entire best of three series. Yeah, and I've I've actually just been told that Prod have already got everything uh, prepared, so we can actually look at the standings as they are right now, updated from the matches that have been played. And there they sit. Bliss still out in front on 13 points, not something I thought that I would be saying. And again, you know, a big point to highlight is three overtime wins. You know, these are... <sighs> This is the really crucial part right now is Team Bliss have either pushed it to OT or won cleanly in all of their matches so far. Another big thing here, if you look at Bliss, is they've only lost one game. So if you're looking at these columns, right, you can see on the right-hand side, there's lost OT and just lost. All of the other teams have lost like two, three. Wildcards lost four games. LFOs lost five. Bliss has only lost one, and the one that they lost was overtime, which means they still got a point for it. And I think yeah. that just goes to show with Bliss, like being able to push overtime and being able to close out a lot of these overtime wins, as you're saying, has been massive. Like you look at the difference between Bliss and Rhythm, Bliss in first, Rhythm in sixth. And the difference there is that, uh, well, Rhythm has lost one game outright, uh, that Bliss has won, and of course, Bliss won having won that game earlier today as well. It's such a narrow margin, like, that's just two games that separates those two teams between first and sixth. <sighs> that's insane, actually. When you look at it and compare the pair, same income, same super contribution. That's it. Um, you know, but just a, a vastly, vastly different uh, result in terms of points. So I think that as well, like when, when you look at this, Team Bliss would be sitting third equal with Chiefs right now had it not have been for their clutch wins in overtime. You know, like there's there's so many pieces to this pie that we kind of recreate after it's been mushed and everyone's had their, their bite. Um, and I think that uh, the main point is is really for me just, you know, the, the lack of... Uh, the win column for Knights, overtime or just straight wins, it's it's a big one that's really caused a, a bit of confusion for me anyway, Dev, because I expected Knights to come into OCN uh, really quite staunch, if you will, yeah. um, and just be bullying these teams, but it's, it really has not been the case. We all did. We all expected that uh, Knights would look really good in OCN. Uh, they started off pretty poorly. It's funny, like that very first play day for them, they had just beaten Chiefs in Apex South. They come into OCN and lose to them. Yeah. Uh, and then following that, they uh, similar thing happens in or uh, with Order. They lose to Order in OCN and then go beat them in Apex South. Uh, so, I mean, it's clear that Knights have really, um, like OCN has been a, a priority for them, but Apex South has been beat priority for them and yeah. so when it comes down to obviously like the best team wins and it's not just about uh you don't just turn off and on being at like a good team right knights are making mistakes and that's what's led to these losses and they can't let that slip right now we have no. seen that they are mortal right they lost uh six rounds in a row to seventh heaven which i'm just going to keep you know giving a crap for because they were up six zero and then they still got pushed to overtime in apex south and they lost a point for it. Even though they won the game, that cost them one point on the standings. And uh, we've seen a similar case here uh, in OCN as well. Like, they, they're, they're losing games that they really shouldn't be. And yeah. uh, they can't let that happen here. They really, really can't. No, they definitely... They, there's pieces to this puzzle that just don't really seem to fit for Knights. You know, all of their performances, you put them together, you kind of have a look on a bird's eye view and you just start to you start to ask what what is going on? You know, like how how is this possible? Right now, Rhythm are set to make a comeback. They are looking really strong. This rehost is going to take a little bit longer. So we, we are going to go to a short break. But before we actually do that, I just want to say that if Knights can't take the three points away from Rhythm here, we then really need to be questioning their intent for OCN because at the end of the day, they are going to have to make a playoff run if they make it to playoffs, mind you. 
you, they are going to have to make a playoff run from fifth or fourth position, which means two or three extra games across the weekend. And that is going to cause, uh, you know, even more... Um, I'm trying to think of the right word here. I think even more fatigue, if you will, even mental fatigue at that. So we are going to go to a break, ladies and gents. We do apologize for this rehost. However, we'll be back as soon as we can. Pick up I know to be right on yeah. Cause no one really gives Don't look back or keep your eyes on Long ago, long ago Doesn't matter what it comes from uh, uh, Never gave a shit, shit Real so uh, uh, Love to take a hit hey, hey. Who's getting high on Look around, look around. People fight all their life for some peace. Yeah. Look around, look around. Fancy cars and the smiles of the ocean. Purple sky, let that night come with peace. Anywhere you wanna be, anywhere you wanna be. Yeah, yeah. Hold up your sign, though. Hey, hey, down on that. Just 
Travel light lanes, it's just enough, it's just enough, oh yeah Just for you, just a man Just an ocean in the wind We ain't gotta make plans Fair enough, it's fair enough, oh yeah Always you and me, trying to be weightless Like we're the two surviving pieces for something Always you and me trying to be weightless And I know it feels like But light years in the making Up, up, up A thousand miles of luck Don't look down, we made it Feet far off the pavement And we go up, up, up A thousand miles of luck Oh no, we stay understated Pressure feels amazing Just the dust, just the sand Just the motion of your hand Travel lightly Just your height, man Just the one, just to believe of I don't care, I see you Loading up my mind, makes me on the side Fair enough, fair enough, ah oh yeah Always you and me Trying to be weightless Like we're the two Surviving Pieces of something Appreciate you sticking around, ladies and gents. We're getting back into this matchup. It's currently 5 4 on Oregon. It's Rhythm that are making a comeback, and it is Knights that are going to well and truly miss out on the three points if they're not careful, Dev. It may well be history repeating itself because we saw Knights play against 7th Heaven and Apex South. They were 6-0 up on this map and they were forced overtime. Even though they got that win, they lost one point because it was only a win in overtime. They can't let that happen here. Looking at the standings, right? It's not quite how we expected this season to play out. Bliss is on top, then Order, Chiefs, Rufflecopter, and then Knights all the way down in 5th. With Rhythm nipping at their heels, now Rhythm are hoping to get into that top five for a playoff spot. Knights hoping to jump higher than fifth so that not only can they guarantee themselves playoffs, but also every place that you get above fourth in playoffs means that you're going to be playing one less game during that playoffs. And that is everything because of our gauntlet format. Yeah, it certainly is. Third, second, and first, all with one less. It, you know, when you do talk about fatigue, it is quite serious. You know, these players right now, especially for Knights, are, they're currently playing four games a week, four officials a week, which previous to this has only ever been two. <laughs> so it's not, this is not easy by any means. Now, oh, Supremacist. Rush. Well, Supremacist is going to give them a taste of their own medicine right now. So are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Because I tell you right now, the Knights are not in comes the rush supremacist joins josh doesn't know oh supremacist is looking the wrong oh way my what's God. going on rhythm have crumbled see you <laughs> later alligator <sighs> you have egg all over your face rhythm game's done quick rhythm edition they spent their technical timeout and that entire technical break just to fall flat on their faces you know what that was that was harry potter going a platform nine and three quarters but he was just one platform off and he went splat into that brick wall <laughs> knights match point i think this literally is the story of icarus something <laughs> about flying a little bit too close to the sun about being a little bit too arrogant you know what 
I can already hear the comms from Rhythm, and they're just laughing. Because you have to, at that point, you surely just have to enjoy what you're throwing. Certainly are throwing. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. And that was the last time Manic and Dev of a cast. <laughs> Confirmed throwing, huh? Uh, well, I, I, wonder, mean... I wonder who would be better in an ultimate frisbee game, rhythm or digital? <laughs> They're both pretty good at throwing. That's all. That's all I'll say. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you just gotta take your shot. You know, doesn't matter if it's uh, a bit too ambitious. You just gotta take it. Now, like if we dial it in for a second. Realistically, uh, a couple of things went wrong there for Rhythm. The main problem is the fact that like that strategy works when the defenders are extending, uh, when they have less players over near Big Window and Kids. Like ideally, you need no one to be in Kids when that Amaru jumps in there. Otherwise, they're just gonna die, and that's what happened. So Rhythm didn't get enough info. As a result. They fell flat on their faces. Now, Knights, it's been a long game so far, but can you lock it out here on your laundry supply defense? You would hope so. It's been one that's caused uh, some interesting plays, to what? say the very least, juicy, ill, disgusting. Great little quick peek there. Great crossfire as well. Sage ready to support it. Nice roam here from the Knights. Lots of information. Denial, the triple threat. Vigil, Mozzie, Mute. All that you could possibly ask for. So many crossfires established. That Mute Jam is actually not only preventing the drones, but also preventing the Selma. And, oh, nice pre-fire from Drex. Damage dealt both ways. Oh, Sage. Lucky to be a lot. Uh, uh, what? Hello and goodbye. That is a very intriguing five or ten seconds there. Sage got away very, very minimally, if you will. Literally one HP in between it. So that could have been 2v2. Now, one piece of information that would be good to know coming into this is currently there has not been a successful defense on this site. Not for Rhythm and not for Knights, but this is looking doable. Certainly the best chance Knights could go for. <laughs> and Rome is gone, but they found three picks and only lost two players, plus Sage, who's uh, put the, the fear of God into him on one HP. But... Might not matter at this point. Knights could even play to retake. It's really onus on Drex and Novax here to figure out what kind of a push they're going for. It looks like they're rotating over to Lawn or rather Freezer as they tempted the idea of going laundry with that Selma, but both together now Freezer. Some util to go for. 30 seconds. Looks like Knights is gonna play passive. The audio cue as well will alert Knights as to the exact positioning of at least the Zafia. Drex needs to be careful. Here's the shot on the player. One HP now on Drex. But both of these, that C4 could be massive. And it is so. No Vaix left to try and clutch it out. Little less than 10 seconds remain. The Vaix will hit the first player. Now needs to push on the Haywood. He's seen him. How close can oh it be? God. No Vaix wins it. In a one versus two clutch to push us to the final round of regulation. What on earth is going on in this match? <laughs> How do you win that? No Vaix in a 1v2. That is absolutely disgusting. Knights kicking themselves that they weren't able to trade those kills. And it slips again, Rob. We thought that. <laughs> This was going to be cut and dried. Knights had everything going for them, but the curse of laundry supply continues. Not a single defense one of five attempts this map. You said, how does he win that? I say, how do they lose that? My goodness. <laughs> we are going to re-attempt it no matter the curse. This will be the sixth attempt in laundry supply. In this match alone, all of which have been unsuccessful, and it is looking to continue that curse. 
It's a big round for Rhythm here, but I am sure that Knights will not uh, recreate the same mistakes. Thing is, it was just a narrow margin that uh, Knights lost that. They won the, the early game, right? That, that run was pretty successful. They managed to have a 3v2 and not a lot of time left for Rhythm. Wasn't even really any any droning at the end of it as well. It was just Rhythm pushing in and getting the job done. Massive step up from Novax as well. So now here is where Rhythm's fate lies. And honestly, equally the same for the Knights here. A rhythm can't cop three points out of this, but they can still get two. If they get two points and Knights get one, these teams will actually be tied on the standings. <laughs> Both Sorry, at what? nine points. <laughs> tied for fifth place. Actually, three-way tied with Rufflecopter. All teams tied for fourth place, and then it'll just come down to that, uh, that oh. tiebreak. Oh, that the tiebreaker, I'm pretty sure, is head-to-head, -head, Dev. And if yeah. Rhythm beat them... Oh, my God. Okay, if Rhythm beat Knights, the Knights miss out because Rufflecopter beat Knights yep. as well. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yep. No way. Oh. So if Rhythm win this 8-6 or 8-7, doesn't matter, then we'll have a three-way tie with Rhythm. Uh, well, Rufflecopter at the top and then Rhythm. And then Knights. Knights will miss out on playoffs. At least, of course, that's not counting tomorrow's results. The final play day. <laughs> Keep in mind that Knights have to play Bliss tomorrow. Who are in incredible form and aren't showing. They're not showing signs of slowing down either, especially after the first matchup we saw tonight. There's a serious Sorry. chance here if Third. Rhythm make this happen. But, like, even one point here, even if Rhythm win this round, that denies Knights one point. And it could be the point that kicks them out of playoffs. Poor narrow margins. The new point system this year has certainly created some very interesting scenarios as we come into our seventh and final play day tomorrow. Josh, praying to God here, that someone can help him. Use of the impact there to deny the Selma. His magnets weren't enough. Oh, Dino doesn't get concussed. He finds the kill onto Trex. Can he get more as well? His Knights have fought back. Josh looks what? for a peek, what? but what was that play? Ill-advised. Rhythm and a 4v2 Juicy and Sage have to hold on. Oh, this would be a huge point for Rhythm right there. Jeez, I got a heart attack. I couldn't imagine what was going on. For Juicy, he needs to hit a very sharp shot. It's going to go deep with a smoke now. It's going to force Rhythm into the site. And Juicy, he could peak this, but it's going to come down. And a push from Sage. What a shot. It's oh my Sage. It's just down in time. It's now no Vax. Oh, that's it. The nail is in the coffin for Rhythm. And Knights in a four versus two clutch up in a huge round. All three points go their way and a welcome three points at that. Unbelievable from the Knights in the two versus four to make the comeback happen. They did it, they took down the rhythm, and they have taken their way up the standings. What a massive achievement from them. Juicy in that final round. And was it Sage? Who was it that pushed into Freezer there? Uh, yeah, that, that was Sage. That was Rita. massive. That was monstrous. A four versus two. That is the things, that is the stuff that champions are made of. And it may just well show us the champions of Knights. The problem is, too little too late at this point, they're going to have to play for whatever is on offer, Dev. Yeah, it's looking uh, pretty unlikely that Knights is going to be able to rocket much further up the standings than this. Currently, they'll be sitting on 11 points. So technically, it actually is still possible for them to end in first place. Yep. Uh, if they beat 
Bliss without going to overtime, they would be on 14 and actually overtake Bliss just barely. But even just winning in overtime against Bliss uh, will actually, that would technically also, because of head to head, be enough to be ahead of Bliss. So as long as they beat Bliss, they will be above Bliss. Yep. Uh, but aside from that, Order and Chiefs are also threats. Yes, they certainly are. And I think that. I mean, I, I do, I'll be honest, I do wish that Rhythm had been able to take at least a point away from them because it would have been oh so sweet after a, such a hard fought game. You know, I think that Rhythm have held their own there and they'll look back at this and, you know, the rush is all good and well and it's a, it, it's funny for us to see and it's, it's good for the viewers to see every once in a while a, a bit of a different strap being taken, exactly but right. that really did cost them in the end. It's true, Rhythm are going to be kicking themselves at that rush not working out for them, but it was a valiant effort, and sometimes you just got to take a shot. And that's what they did. Uh, fortunately for the Knights, they don't let another Oregon game uh, slip to overtime after holding the advantage. Once again, a massive showing from Juicy. I don't know what the guy has been doing, but he has been pumping iron this season. 16-6 and six is just another stat uh, up in the, the big W column for Juicy. Massive showing from him. Yeah. Uh, overall, though, uh, Rhythm had a, a really good showing in that game. And if anything, I'm just disappointed for them that that doesn't give them the necessary points on the standings to break into the top five as of yet. Yeah. yeah I think um, I think Juicy, uh, the rumors have it, he's been hitting up Snap Fitness. Um, they're uh, $4 a week in the first four weeks. Yeah. Uh, that's, I've, I've heard uh, that's, good things about it. Yeah, that's, that's just the rumor I've been hearing. So let's hear from the horse's mouth. Juicy. You're not a horse, by the way, I promise you. You're not a <laughs> horse, but goodness me, what an end to the game. There were six attempts in basement and only one was successful. And that, that was what got you the three points. Why go back to basement there? Um, We just knew that we kept throwing either leads or like um, yeah. we'd get in the 5v3 and they'd get two picks back and we just... We knew that we could change a couple of things. Even in that last round, we still didn't. We just got picked off again, and I don't know. We just it just felt comfortable. We could go there. We knew we could clutch up if we needed to, and we could just take it from there. Yeah. Well, you said if all else fails, you just clutch up. What does it take to clutch up? You, you're the man on the back line playing the smoke. You've got one of the you know arguably worst guns uh, to to be in a position like that for in the SMG11. Can't really pre-fire with that, and you've got Sage. Uh, at your back as well. What 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 is it like in a two v four like that? Trying to uh, go for that retake. Talk me through the thought process that you guys had, you and Sage. Uh, so we knew. I heard him planning close on the wall. I knew that we could like probably couldn't deny the planner exactly. So we're just going to try to pick off the people around him. Um, smoke off certain areas. Like uh, know that they couldn't cross them. Laundry to the table. So and just back each other to win the win the ones. And that's I. That's what it comes down to, really. Just winning your ones on the people that are trying to cover the plants and hope hope it goes well. <laughs> There's no any any defined um, situation, but I don't know. It just worked out for us. I love it. Our job is to sit here and analyze every little second. And Juicy's <laughs> saying, just win your ones. Just win your ones, man. We'll Swing win the game. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Just win your ones and we're, we're back into it. Um, look, I want to I want to ask you because I know I know this may have been asked before, but I I'm really curious. You know, we're into the final play day for OCN, and this season has just been one of the strangest couple of results I've seen. Is this teams at the bottom closing the gap, or do you think that there is a little fatigue for you right now? Um, uh, I think it's a combination. Obviously, teams do get better the more and more time they put in, and uh, but it also like said earlier early in interviews it's it's just wrapping your head around dealing with so many play days like i think this week is four for us so like yeah. e either prep or anything and I, I know it's like it sounds really strange to say but like obviously most of our time goes in the south like with either prep or something like that because you know it's i suppose more important in a way but um it, it's it's just balancing act and it's just closing the gap either that way or yeah so I don't know really, other than that. 
No, no, that's fine. Look, the final question I have, and then we'll, we'll leave it on that. You guys have Bliss coming up tomorrow. And if you beat them, you do leapfrog over the top of them. How are you feeling coming up against them? Uh, same as every game we go into, you know, feel confident. You look at their, look at their tendencies, look at their maps and, you know, go from, go from there and just play the game as it plays out. There's not much more you can really do with that. It's just, you know, who's playing better on the day. They've always like, they've improved a lot and being their sort of like sole focus they can put all their prep into this and you just have to go out there on the day and whoever's playing better will win yeah well you know what we'll leave it on that best of luck tomorrow and we i think we're gonna see you in playoffs so we'll see you soon mate sweet right thanks boys i mean i'm not gonna theory craft here on the broadcast because there's one rule of the broadcast there's only one rule that you do you must abide by, abide by and it's no live maths you don't do live maths on broadcast it's the only hard rule of esports broadcasts because we're all knuckleheads apparently but dev duh oh. oh, man how it's, how it's... the knights do that in a four versus two let's have a look at the schedule as of course we talk about what on earth we just saw in that matchup yeah well might's just uh yeah clinched it out at the end there uh, a great game a uh, great day of games even uh if I, I feel like there weren't really any upsets um i think that if you looked at this game on paper coming into it this would probably not surprise you as a set of results the two games in the middle are probably the ones most likely to, to swing either way chief's order is very close uh between the two and obviously the scoreline represents that it just came down to that 15th round order managed to, to get that was a monstrous game on coastline uh, definitely also there was a shoe in for wild card, but Bliss have just been something else this season and they've taken that number one spot. Uh, now there is a shot at it for Knights. Fortunately for them, while it did get close, they lock out uh, Rhythm and that means there's actually a very real possibility that Knights can, believe it or not, after this terrible season, take number one spot in OCN and the guaranteed grand final that that comes with it. Aye, uh, yeah. Insane. There you go. See, we even even prod knows math is bad. Let's have a look at the standings and and, and see the final uh, recap of what tonight has. Oh, sorry, not the standings. You know what? We, we were close right. enough. We united predictions for oh the God. first and last game. I'll Let's shake go. your hand on that one. Yes. And, uh, look, we both for the middle two games, we both got one right, one wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm so devastated about that because that was going to be the biggest brain play if Chiefs were able to pull that back. They had it. It was in their hands, Dev. They, they literally, they could smell it. It was so close to them. And they just, their second half was just not good enough. But apart from that, it, it has been a, a relatively simple night, if I'm being yeah. completely honest with you. That second game was probably the one that caused the most confusion. Sure, and look, Raven coming into the day was actually leading, and he's having a bit of a shock. It's not only got one game correct, so it yep. uh, sucks to be him, but that's all right. Can't expect much. I uh, don't know if he even watches the games now he's not casting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess the, the bone to pick for us now is, uh, look, sitting at the bottom. Uh, alongside Gaz and Xenox, the other two casters. I guess this oh, goes God. to show that the people who don't actually cast this league seem to have the best read on predictions. Oh, why would you ever show that to me? One thing we are going to show you, ladies and gentlemen, is the MVP of tonight. That is Joker. A really great performance from him. You know, put him beside Ippy Style, and both of those players really held strong for order when it mattered most. The reason why Joker is MVP tonight instead of Ippy Style, um, who obviously Ippy Style is miles above in terms of the kills, but Joker's plays were super impactful. And it was moments like this, when Chiefs had a five versus three advantage, when Joker's plays ward things back into his favor. This one was honestly the game winning moment for Order. Like they're down six, five. They're about to lose the map 7-5 and not get a single point and that play right there from Joker even running outside at the end all the way to safety uh, not only did that get his team one point on the standings guaranteeing overtime but it also of course led to eventually them winning the game 8-7 uh, and overtaking Chiefs on the standings and the standings is where it's at right now that's 
what it's all boiled down to this season. Uh, we've had six play days, and this is how it's shaped up. Bliss in number one, Order, thanks to that comeback against Chiefs in number two. Chiefs have dropped thanks to the Knights overtaking them. And you know what's super exciting, Rob? Next play that we have Bliss versus Knights. And the winner of that takes number one spot, unless if Order can also just decimate Rufflecopter. Yeah, it, you know, this is the thing right now is it's, it's actually still technically up for grabs for that fifth and final place. Uh, so it, it can be anyone's game. I mean, there's so many different scenarios here and I'm sure both Guz and Xenox will, will run you through that tomorrow as the play day actually starts once we've had a little bit more time to dissect the opportunities and, and dissect what's going on. Uh, because truth be told, I don't know what the bloody hell is going on. OCN has just been uh, a mental, mental three weeks, four weeks. So this is where it comes down to, Dev. You know, four, yeah. five, six weeks doesn't make a difference how many weeks we play for. Play day seven is the final determining night of where everyone stands and these are the matchups some pretty big ones in that certainly and there are some really exciting possibilities throughout this of course pittsburgh knights versus bliss may well be the game that determines that number one team in ocn and that means guaranteed uh grand final through the playoffs now the other team i'm looking at to potentially be in that number one spot is order their games against rufflecopter who have had a serious spat of bad luck and are actually pushed almost out of playoffs completely now. So they're playing for their spot in the playoffs and Order is playing to skip through the entire playoffs. And if they win that, they take number one spot uh, on the standings unless Bliss uh, beats Knights, which I think is probably not happening. So uh, also she's wildcard, like what a massive game right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's just crazy because, you know, that first matchup is going to determine a lot about what's left open and what isn't. You know, like it's, it really is up for grabs here. So uh, you really want to make sure that you pencil this in. Uh, I believe it all starts 7 p.m. Uh, tomorrow, same place, same time. Uh, and that's the big thing is right now, that first matchup, it will determine who's in first but there's so many potential possibilities of teams leapfrogging and and finding a, a massive clutch moment when it's needed lfo can only deny points now which i'm yeah. going to say something controversial that's where they thrive i wish yes. it wasn't but they thrive when they have like when they just want to ruin someone's day that's when they perform the most it's true they knocked chiefs out of playoffs last season after that chiefs came third in the regular season, they ended up coming fifth because they got knocked out of playoffs by LFO. Um, yeah, so the, the beats to know for tomorrow is if Bliss win their game, uh, they are guaranteed first place. Uh, if they, if Order wins their game, they should take first place unless if Bliss wins theirs. Uh, Knights have a serious shot at first place. Uh, they just got to hope that Order don't do so well against Rufflecopter and Rufflecopter are playing for a spot in playoffs. Wildcard is also playing for a spot in playoffs. Uh, as is Rhythm, actually. So there's a lot of possibilities there. Uh, how it's going to eventuate, I think... I'm going to give you some spoilers. I think tomorrow, Order number one, Knights number two, Bliss number three, and Chiefs number four, probably. And for number five, I don't know, you're going to have to watch. He's going to have to watch it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have to, right? That's what we're going to leave it on. You have to watch it, ladies and gents. Same place, same time tomorrow. We have thoroughly enjoyed running you through all of the action for Play Day 6, and we'd like to thank you for joining us, of course. But that is all we have. It's bittersweet, but we will see you tomorrow night. Good luck and have fun.
I'm running out of time I'm running out of money on a feeling so I'm running out of time Let me see the rainbow.